Hi there, and happy Independence Day America for those of you who observe and or celebrate. This live stream is being broadcast on July 3rd, which is the day before the American Independence Day of July 4th. And so I'm playing a program called Summer Vacation USA, which celebrates uh, different areas of our country. I'm going to play music by four living composers, and each piece represents some idea, some essence of an area in the United States. The first piece I'm going to play is maybe the most general of those. It's called Folk Suite for Solo Cello by the cellist and composer Daniel Delaney. He wrote this piece in 2011, and actually all the pieces on the program are written basically within the last decade. Uh, he lives in Colorado right now, and some of the piece was written in Colorado, some of it was written on the East Coast. He describes it as traditional-esque and Americana-esque. And you'll notice that it has a certain somewhat undefinable Americana quality, a kind of down-home country quality, and I actually myself find it difficult to exactly explain what that means when I hear it in music, but I think you'll recognize it. Uh, it might be a little bit about Appalachian fiddle music. Uh, I'm not exactly sure, but this is going to be a suite in four movements. The movements are Prelude, Country Dance, Lullaby, and Finale. This is the Folk Suite for Solo Cello by Daniel Delaney.
Folk Suite by Daniel Delaney. So true confessions, I have pre-recorded this concert and the reason that I have is because right now, if you're watching it on the live stream on July 3rd or soon thereafter, I'm in Italy. And in Italy, it is the middle of the night when this live stream, stream is gonna be broadcast. So um, also just cause things are crazy when I first go over to Italy, I recorded this on June 25th before I left the US. So even though I'm in Italy, the music has embodied the United States since I recorded it before I left. Um, the next piece that I'm going to play comes from the Pacific Northwest. The composer actually comes from uh, not the Pacific Northwest, uh, but the piece is based on uh, an event that happened in 1885, which is the signing of the Point Elliot Treaty. The name of the piece is Day and Night Cannot Dwell Together by the composer and flutist Pamela Sklar. She's really quite a renowned flutist, and one of the things she plays is Native American flute. Uh, so this piece is very much tied into that because this is a story from the Duwamish Nation. The Point Elliot Treaty was a treaty that gave the Duwamish Nation fishing rights in the Seattle era. era. In the Seattle area, I do want to mention when I record these live streams, I don't do any editing, so all the bobbles that I'm going to have are real time. Um, Chief Elliot, but <laughs> let me try it one more time. Chief Seattle, during the Point Elliot Treaty signing, was very doubtful about what was going on with good reason. He really advocated for Native American rights, for land rights, for fishing rights. Uh, and during a speech that he gave at the signing of this treaty, he said these words, day and night cannot live together, meaning you may be signing this treaty with us, but I know darn well that your people and my people cannot coexist. We want different things here in this land. And of course he was correct that the white settlers were coming into the area and would eventually push out all the Native Americans, except for certain, certain little areas. So this piece has a, um, a sadness about it, a resignation, uh, and it is not specifically about the, this event that happened, but rather I think sort of the sentiments of resolution, despair, and just sadness over the fact that the people who once were so thriving in that area were pushed out and overcome by the white settlers who came in, uh, that in fact, day and night cannot dwell together. This is a piece by Pamela Sklar.
hapless day and night cannot dwell together by Pamela Sklar. So from the Pacific Northwest, we're going to go down to the desert, desert Southwest for a piece called Desert Aesthetic by the composer Emma Logan. Emma lives in the San Francisco area at this point. And she wrote this piece about her uh, home area in, I think it's Arizona, somewhere in the desert. I believe it's the Arizona desert um, where she grew up. And so what I'm going to do, I will say the names of the movements before I play each one, because I think it gets hard to keep track of what the names of all the movements are and what they're about. But first, before, I will tell you what the different movements are going to be about, and then I'll say the titles as I do them. The first movement is called At Night. It's very slow. It's very eerie. The, it's evoking the kind of mysterious sounds of the desert, sometimes very, very still and sometimes scurrying and crackling, uh, but just but eerie to, to some extent. The second movement's called Allergy Season, and it's sort of irritated. Uh, the third movement is called After Rain, and you'll hear at the beginning sort of raindrops, just the final end of the storm finishing, and then at the end of the piece, the sort of crystalline sound, which is the glistening of the drops on different objects they've landed on. Uh, then the fourth room, it's called Super Bloom. And the Super Bloom is the time after the rain, when, it's, when we've had, had a rainy winter, rainy spring, where all the wildflowers seemingly overnight burst into color all at once. And sort of this carpet of color on the desert, that is the Super Bloom. And then the last movement is called Fiery Twilight. You can see the sun in all the varying amazing colors that it turns going across the sky. And then at the very end of the piece, the sun goes down and we kind of return to where we started in the night of the desert. So this is Desert Aesthetic by Emma Logan. At Night. allergy season.
After rain. Super blue.
fiery twilight. <laughs> That was Desert Aesthetic by Emma Logan. I've got one more piece for you, and this one is from Vermont. This is called The Green Mountains by Gwyneth Walker. Gwyneth Walker lived on a dairy farm in Vermont for about 30 years. I think she's back in Connecticut, which was her uh, area she grew up in. But while she was in the Green Mountains, she was very taken by the land, and she wrote this piece with fairly specific descriptions about the Green Mountains. Uh, so again, I'm going to tell you what the movement is about and then I'll just announce the title of the movement as I go. So the first movement's called The Land uh, and she actually writes that it expresses open landscape, just the beauty of the mountains. Kind of there's, you know, excitement and energy in it as well as sort of the just the silence and vastness of the mountain area. The second movement is called The Life. And it refers to birth of humans and animals and wildlife, but also just um, life in general, gathering energy and the, the, both the humans and the wildlife coming in and building lives for themselves there in the mountains. Um, the third movement is called the spirit, and it represents the spiritual presence in quiet fields and forests as well as in more energetic areas, streams, wind rustling through the leaves. And then the last movement is ca just called, I think it's just called the mountain, wait, I should look. <laughs> I don't want to misrepresent, mountain music, excuse me. The last movement is the most robust, uh, kind of energetic about them, really um, representing sort of the, the um, vastness and the, and the bigness uh, the strong quality of the mountain in its robustness. So uh, this is the four movement suite, The Green Mountains, a tribute to Vermont, written in 2010 by Gwyneth Walker. And we begin with the land. And we actually begin with tuning, hold on. <laughs>
spirit.
Mountain Music. to finish up this program of Americana. I will still go look at comments, even though this is pre-recorded, you can still make comments, I believe, um, on the recording, and I will see them and I will respond to them when it's not four o'clock in the morning in Italy. See you soon.